All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So at this point, I'm sure most of you already know that the next banner that's gonna be dropping on the global side of the game is the one you see on the screen right now for the LR Super Saiyan Blue Kaken Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. So in today's video, I wanna give you guys a full preview of everything to do with this upcoming release from a full breakdown of both the new units, the LR Blue Boys, as well as the new Krillin, and uh, also taking a look at their animation, taking a look at the new category led by the LR called Desperate Struggle, obviously breaking down their banner as well from JP to see how good we can expect the global banner to be. And finally, we'll end off this video by taking a look ahead at some of the other banners, some of the other releases we can expect to see uh, on global in December to help you guys decide whether or not you want to actually spend your hard-earned dragon stones on this banner for the blue boys or if you want to hold them for you know another banner in the future like for LR Jiren, the step up banner, so on and so forth. We'll talk more about that of course later on in the video. Now before we get into it just a quick reminder to follow your boy on social media, eat like Goku on Twitter as well as Tiger Upcut Media on Instagram to find out what I'm up to in between the videos and the streams. You can find links in my description down below. All right, so with all that said, let's just uh, jump right into it. And the first place I think we should start is by watching the animations for both the new units, because obviously that's something that's very important to a lot of people when deciding whether or not to summon for a new unit, right? So we're gonna pop over to the official Dope on Twitter page here. And I have the animations pulled up, so let's check them out together. Here we go. Yo, <laughs> yo, it's been a while since I've actually watched these animations myself, right? Like it's pretty much been like the last time I saw them was when they first came out on JP and it's been like four or five months since and I had forgotten just how clean their animations are, man. Like this is literally an entire episode of Dragon Ball Super. Like this could be, someone could have told me they took this directly out of the anime and I would have believed it, you know, like it's so nice. Yo, especially that active skill too. I mean, Krillin's good too. Like, no hate on my boy Krillin. You know, like, they did a fine job with his animation, but the Blue Boys, man. Yo. For the animations alone, I'm probably gonna throw a couple of of the banner. I was planning to do, like, one video anyways, but... Yeah, it's gonna be a hard skip. It's gonna be a hard skip. Now, of course, we still gotta get to their banner, animations, all that stuff. So before you make your decision, wait for all those things. But... Man, the animations alone, I think, are definitely enough to get a ton of people to summon. And rightfully so. Like, that's beautiful. Alright, so that's a good start to the video. And uh, now let's pop over to the banner and take a look. And, I mean, as, as, as awesome as the animations are, the banner is not as awesome. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Unless they make some major changes to this banner when it drops on Global, um, it's actually going to be pretty hard to recommend people to, you know, spend too many stones because, you know, taking a look here, first things first, there are 10 featured SSRs, which is, uh, I believe, three, two or three more than the average Dokkan Fest banner, but that's to be expected because it is a Dokkan Fest LR compared to just a regular Dokkan Fest TUR that's new, right? So usually for these banners, there are more featured SSRs, but because there's 10 featured SSRs, 
the rate for each individual SSR, specifically the LR Blue Boys, is much lower instead of the normal 0.7 or 0.8%. These guys only have a 0.5% pull rate. Okay, so your chances of pulling them on this banner compared to a regular Dokkan Festival banner with a you know normal TUR is uh, quite a bit lower. And on top of that, while there are some very good featured units like the uh, Fizz Beerus here who, I mean, he could be replaced because it wasn't too long ago that he was featured on Global, but I feel like they're gonna keep this banner the same, honestly. Like, if they do make a change, they'll probably swap out Beerus, but I have a feeling that they're gonna keep this banner very, very similar to the JP one. So if they keep Fizz Beerus, they have to keep the LR Gobros, because that was a big reason why people were summoning. Outside of these two new units, as well as these two, you know, returning units, everybody else is mad old and has been featured a bajillion times, you know, like these transforming guys right here, the Vegeta and Goku, man, I cannot tell you how many times I've pulled both of them. Vegeta probably like 20 times, Goku at least 15 or so, and most veteran players, man, most people who have been playing this game for a couple of years just do not want to see their faces ever again. And then taking a look at the rest of the banner, we got the AGL Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, STR Jiren, Int UI Goku, and Int Full Power, or sorry, uh, Angel Golden Frieza. And once again, these guys are just mad old. And because they're mad old, they've been featured so many times that most people who have been playing for a while have them rainbowed. So they're just going to be basically useless fodder if we pull them, right? And for people like me, when we get animations like you know, Hercule on Boo or My Riding Trunks or uh, Vegito animation, you know, all those things that guarantee a Dokkan Fest unit, it's not really going to be hype anymore on a banner like this because more than half the time, you're going to be getting something that you just literally cannot use, right? So like I said, compared to some of the other Dokkan Festival banners we've seen, especially on the JP side, like the um, transforming Angel Golden Frieza one, the recent STR Bojack one on JP. Those Dokkan Fest banners are just so much better than the one you see right here. And if it wasn't for the fact that they at least gave us Fizz Beerus and the LR Gobros, and the fact that the Fizz uh, LR Blue Boys are amazing and uh, Krillin's really good too, I mean, I might have just straight up told people to skip this banner completely, but I wouldn't say it's horrible. I don't think it's bad enough to recommend a complete skip. It's just, I think it could have been a lot better. And I mean, I guess it makes sense for the theme of the celebration or the theme of the banner to include these guys, but they're just, they're so old, you know? So like, it kind of sucks that they're on there, but uh, that's the banner guys. And like I said, I do expect it to be very similar um, on global compared to this one right here, the JP one. And if they do make changes and swap out a unit, it's probably going to be Fizz Beerus because I don't see them being so generous and swapping out one of these guys. You know, that's just not how Akatsuki or Bandai operates. But uh, yeah, that's the banner right there. Now let's move on to a quick breakdown of the new units. We're going to start with the AGL Krillin, who is going to be the secondary or side featured unit on the Blue Boys banner. His leader skill is representatives of Universe 7, Category Key plus 3, HP, Attack and Defense plus 100 and 20%. His super attack causes supreme damage and lowers attack with a high chance of stunning the enemy. And his passive is attack and defense plus 180%. Medium chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, key plus 2, plus additional attack and defense plus 120%. When your team has Android 18 attacking in the same turn, attacks effective against all types when the target enemy is stunned. So basically, when he has Android 18 on the same rotation, he is getting 300% <laughs> attack and defense. And uh, of course, he does other things too, right? He lowers attack, he has a high chance to stun, attacks effective against all, against stunned enemies. This guy can be pretty freaking insane. Now, of course, he's only at his full power when he's with his wife, right? The Android 18. And if you don't have her on the team, then He's only going to be getting, well, only going to be getting 180% attack and defense. In that case, he's not going to be nearly as impressive. Still good. He's still going to be fine. It's just when he's got the Android 18, he is crazy. And uh, his links are experienced fighters, turtle school, solid support, brainiacs, courage, tournament of power, fierce battle, and categories are universe survival saga, representatives 
of Universe 7, Earthlings, and Battle of Wits. So that's Krillin, a very, very good um, non Dokkan Fest unit. And we're gonna move on to now the LR Blue Boys. And despite how good Krillin is, these guys, of course, are still the main prize on the banner. Their leader skill is Desperate Struggle, brand new category, or Joint Forces, category Q plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 100. And 50%. And let's take a quick look at the Desperate Struggle category here. So this is another one of those categories that is super ambiguous. It just feels like they threw this together for the sake of making a new category. The description on the Dokkan Wiki says, consists of characters engaging in an all-out desperate struggle. So yeah, pretty ambiguous. You can really take it a number of ways. And this is what uh, we ended up with. Okay, so we got the LR Blue Boys, of course, as the main leader. And we got a few highlights here, right? We got the uh, AGL uh, Gohan, who is literally on like every category in the game. And we have the LR Goku and Frieza, Int Gohan, uh, Super Saiyan 2 Angel Vegeta, and uh, LR Bardock, okay. And I mean, I'll just, you know, give you guys a quick look here. I'm not gonna highlight everybody, but it's not the biggest category, it just seems kind of random to me, to be honest. And uh, just like the Blue Boys banner, this category could have been a lot better. Okay, so that is Desperate Struggle. Hopefully, it add on to it in the future, because right now it is quite limited. While it's by far not the worst category in the game, it's also far from the best, right? So that is Desperate Struggle for you. And uh, their super attacks, 12 key, is Destructo Disc and Gallic Gun, which greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, causes colossal damage, and lowers attack. And the 18 key is Kamehameha and Final Flash, which also greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, causes mega colossal damage, and lowers attack and defense. Their passive is attack and defense plus 70%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 7% per key sphere obtained, chance of performing a critical hit plus 7%, key plus 2 and launches an additional attack up to 3 with each Rainbow Key Sphere obtained. So they get a decent boost to start and then they have this nuking passive and then they're also getting um, you know, up to I guess 35% chance to crit, uh, up to an extra 10 key and additional 3 normal attacks depending on how many Rainbow Key Spheres. Now of course the reason I say critical hit chance plus up to 35% and key plus up to 10 is because the maximum number of rainbow key spheres you can obtain in one turn is five. Okay, so great passive right there. If this was all they had, it would already be a very, very good unit, but you also have to take into account their active skill, which is called the full spirit, full body release, which gives them key plus 24, attack plus 70%, but defense minus 50% for one turn and can be activated when HP is 50% or less. So essentially you're getting a guaranteed 24 key super. You're getting a massive, massive attack boost on top of the attack you're already getting from the key spheres, right? So on that turn, you're gonna be doing some massive, massive damage. It's very similar to the uh, Tech LR Broly's active skill or Super Saiyan 2 Angel Vegeta, uh, Fizz Beerus, so on and so forth. Just one huge nuke. Now, unfortunately they do lose 50% defense that turn, so you have to be a little bit careful with you know, where you place them, but more often than not, that attack will kill whatever enemy you're facing, so it's not going to be an issue you know, that often. So that's the active skill, and for the you know activation conditions, I mean 50% HP is a little bit low, but there's no other restriction like turns or anything like that, so in theory, unlike Super Battle Road or Extreme Super Battle Road, if you get hit by like a super or two on the first turn, you can activate it like second turn or the first time they appear, right? So I really don't mind this condition too much. And uh, finally, their links are Super Saiyan, Godly Power, Warrior Gods, Kamehameha, Tournament of Power, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And categories are Universe Survival Saga, Realm of Gods, Pure Saiyans, Full Power, Representatives of Universe 7, Join Forces, Kamehameha, and Desperate struggle. So that is pretty much everything you need to know about the LR Blue Boys or LR Super Saiyan Blue Kalkan Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. Oh, actually one last thing I forgot to mention is this quick math section right here. Okay, so active skills are always calculated separately from passive skills, meaning that their additional 70% attack from the active skill 
would result in a total boost of attack plus 189%, and then on top of that, they're getting an additional attack plus 11.9% with each key sphere obtained. So yeah, this unit can hit extremely, extremely hard. Defensively, they're quite good as well. Not amazing, but still really, really good. They're pretty much top tier in every conceivable way, you know, from their animations, which are some of the best in the game, to their passive, their active skill, leader skill is great too, um, tons of categories they fit on, uh, great stats, 14,044 at rainbow status, 21,295 attack, 21,025 HP, just an absolutely amazing unit, and definitely one that you know, anybody will be lucky to add to their collection. So that's really all there is to say about this upcoming release. And the last thing we're going to do before we talk about recommendations and what I think people should be doing with their stones is uh, look ahead a little bit, right, to some of the other releases we can expect in December. And a big one is this dude right here. LR freaking Jiren. Okay, if the blue boys were not coming right before the release of this monster right here, I would feel a lot better about recommending people to summon on their banner, right? But LR Jiren is right around the corner. He's going to be dropping about two to two and a half weeks after the Blue Boys banner comes out. If you look at the release dates here, he came out on July 16th of 2020, right? And the Blue Boys came out on uh, June 30th, 2020. So pretty much, what, like 16, 17 days after. And I do expect the same thing for Global. So we should expect to see Jiren around Christmas time since the Blue Boys are coming out on the 4th slash 5th. And uh, man, this guy is just way too good, man. LR Jiren is absolutely broken. Um, definitely in my mind, as well as the minds of a lot of people, even better than the LR Blue Boys. As good as they are, this guy's even better. So, I mean, it's going to be a bit of a tough call. Now, of course, LR Jiren is going to be on a legendary summon banner, whereas the LR Blue Boys are on a Dokkan Festival banner, but not a very good one. So, in terms of value, I still think the Blue Boys banner probably has more value, but Jiren is just better, right? So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty tough. And on top of that, we're also going to be getting this Tanabata banner, and it's going to have the LR Blue Boys as well as the LR Blue Fusions coming back for the first time. Now, they will be available in the Baba Shop as well for red coins, so you can also just buy them instead of you know, summoning on this banner. The LR Gobros are featured again too. Yo, it feels like they just toss them on like every banner these days. And uh, a bunch of other Dokkan Fest units. All the 120 leads, a few EZA units, and uh, also the STR Rose and Tech Vegito Blue. So overall, I think this banner is quite good. But if you're going for specific units like the Blue Boys, or the Blue Fusions rather, and also the LR Blue Boys, then um, it's going to be kind of tough to pull them because they have 20 featured SSRs on this banner, okay? So that means each individual unit has a 0.25% pull rate. That's very, very low. And finally, around New Year's, I think right before New Year's or like on the 31st or something like that, we will be getting another Step Up banner with a guaranteed LR as well as guaranteed Dokkan Fest uh, units like Category Leads, 120 leads, extremes, the awakenable units, all that stuff along the way. And if you guys want a full breakdown of this banner, feel free to go check out my video from a couple days ago, link above my head. And uh, this banner for the average Dokkan player is, in my opinion, a must summon. Okay, so, I mean, you also got to keep this in the back of your mind. There's just going to be a lot of great stuff, a lot of great banners dropping on global for this December. So you really got to allocate your stones properly. You got to make sure to budget them for each banner that you want to summon on, right? So with all that said, I guess the point I want to make in summary is that while this unit is very, very, very good, absolutely one of the best units in the entire game, considering we have the LR Jiren coming, considering we have the Step Up banner coming as well, and if you want to do all three rounds, it's going to be 600 stones in total for that step up banner. I would advise the average Dokkan player, the non-whale player, to go pretty light on this banner. You know, don't spend too many of your stones on it because, number one, it's just not a great banner by Dokkan Fest standards. And outside of like the Jiren and the step up banner and the Tenabata banner dropping in December, 
we're most likely also going to be getting some pretty good stuff in January, right? Either the transforming Angel Golden Frieza, or maybe even Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, we'll have to see. But I think those banners are definitely better to summon on than this one right here. And honestly, the only reason you should be summoning on this banner is if you really, really, really want the LR Blue Boys, which I know a lot of people do. So, you know, if you have to summon, then go for it. But try to budget yourself. You know, try to set a maximum number of multis you'll allow yourself to do. And regardless of what happens, just stop at that point. So maybe you can say, I'll do four multis at most, and if I don't get the blue boys, it is what it is, or I'll do five multis, or three multis, or whatever your budget may be. Just stop as soon as you get to it, and don't look back, because trust me, this banner is just not worth spending all of your stones on, and if you do end up, you know, splurging on it and have no stones for the rest of December, you'll most likely come to regret it. Okay, so that is my advice, guys. Summon if you must, but go easy and set a budget. So that is today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video, you know, after going through all the animations, after going through all of the details, the banner, the upcoming stuff, all those things, this video helped you guys decide whether or not you want to summon on this banner when it comes out in a couple days. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys plan to do with your stones. Are you going to be saving or are you going to be summoning? And if you are going to be summoning, then how many stones? you plan to spend. I will be streaming as always as soon as the banner goes live. We're going to be doing maybe three to 500 stones on stream. Nothing too crazy, so probably a pretty quick stream, but if you guys want to watch that as soon as it happens, then uh, keep an eye out okay, for the scheduled stream. And that's it. As always, if you guys liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.